fear for I am the child of God if you believe that all across the nations put your hands together and give him praise that you are no longer a slave to fear but a child of the living God put your hands together scream and give him praise Say with my hands lifted up, I declare. That is low energy. Say with my hands lifted up. I declare with spiritual audacity that I am no longer a slave to fear because I am a child of God. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am the redeemer of the Lord. Today I break loose from the shackles of fear. For it is written, Naphtali, Naphtali is a deer let loose. In the name of Jesus, I break my soul free. I break my faith loose. I break myself loose from the grip of fear for I am the child of God put your hands together and make those declarations right now breaking loose breaking free from the shackle of fear I am the child of God I am a child of God in the name of Jesus now lift up your hands say I have come Heavenly Father, from different works of life, from different backgrounds and upbringing, for a new experience that I may encounter you in a new and a living way like never before. In the name of Jesus, I break through. I break through the fortress and the defenses of the enemy and I declare let every adversary be disarmed dispossessed disinherited of their trusted weapons right now in the name of Jesus as I put my hands together let every enemy let every adversary known and unknown be dispossessed, disarmed disinherited of their trusted weapon in the name of Jesus, home and abroad domestic and external by air, by land, by water let them be dispossessed disarmed, disinherited by their trusted weapon in the name of Jesus now lift up your hands say heavenly father I obtain I receive light Illumination, revelation, for it is written, the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the simple. It is written again, the Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? In the name of Jesus, say I receive illumination, revelation, light, light. Say in the name of Jesus, I expel the darkness. I expel every darkness over my life, over my family, over this house, over my nation. I expel every darkness in the name of Jesus. As I put my hands, I expel, 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 expel every darkness, every cloud of darkness over your life, your family, your dwellings your journeys, your travels, your movement by land, by air, by water we expel every cloud of darkness intercept, intercept the workings of the enemy bind the enemy thank you Jesus hallelujah glory to God lift up your hands talk to the father for one minute in other tongues Dila kusimala sa, salafanda kuwa salias, 
Letu kuda kisi mawas Mileki tu kawanda seeds Delay ki to come for candy liki salatan for long kawan sima ye do ku to candy bas pola ki to walk the sand le katunda kasalaman the kanti kafan we silence the enemy we shut them out of the enemy shut them out of the beast shut them out of lions shut them out of diviners silence their incantations Silence their divination. Silence their enchantment. Silence the cry of their altars. Bind their covenants. Negate and all their covenant, their curses. Declare that we are curse breakers. Run through troops and all their imaginations. Call their counsel in the name of Jesus and mischief to a halt. Let them be disappointed and put to shame. That divides the head of your people and the peace of our country. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Divide their tongues, O Lord. Divide their tongues. Make foolish. Make foolish and useless of their schemes and their wisdom. Frustrate the tokens of liars. Make diviners mad. Turn the wise backwards. Turn their knowledge into foolishness. Show them, O oh Lord, that thou art God, that thou art God. Maleki tu kalasa, salanda kasunti kavaya, O sikata, frustrate the tokens of liars, make diviners mad, turn the wise backwards, O make their knowledge foolish. Maleki tu kadila san, kewanta kunda salaman, sefalanda kutan. In the name of Jesus, put your hands together and give him praise. That is low energy club offering. Please take a minute and welcome somebody to the house. All over the nations, those of you in bed, it's time to rise up, get up. Those of you in the sofa, get up, get up. Walk around, give him praise. Welcome somebody to church. It's a blessed day. And tell them, welcome curse breaker, curse breaker. Tell them you are a curse breaker. You are a curse breaker, a curse breaker, a game changer. Put your hands together if you believe that in Jesus' name. When I remember his promises I shout hallelujah When I remember His promises I shout hallelujah When I remember Your promises I shout hallelujah When I remember Your promises I shout hallelujah When I remember His promises I shout hallelujah When I remember His promises I shout hallelujah Two weeks ago and last week we began a subject entitled Renewing Your Mind or Reprogramming Reprogramming Reprogramming. We talked about the fact that as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. And that you are what you think. And your kind of mindset determines your attitude, and your attitude determines your attitude. The choices we make, what we attract, the good, the bad, and the ugly, who we are, what we become in life, has everything to do with the way we think. We talked about the different minds of the different mindsets, different mind settings. We ended up by saying that you must have the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ basically is an attitude of humility. For though he was God, he took upon himself the image of man and emptied himself of deity, of glory. 
and he was void of ego and pride had no reputation whatsoever he had nothing to defend he laid down his glory and came down from eternity into town into into time to help you and I to make us better to conform to the image of God and we talked about having a sound mind and the different types of mind settings today I want to talk to you about what I entitled facing the future without fear facing the future without fear 2024 is a very interesting year in the history of humanity it's a year of the struggle of power it's a year of struggle of power for those in power and for those in opposition everyone is struggling for power and there are reasons why those in power are contending for power and those in opposition are contending for power. It is the year of the struggle of power. It's also the year of uncertainty. And uncertainty produces fear. And fear produces torment. It is believed that 2024 is the biggest election year in the history of man or in history 2024 is the biggest election year in history about 49 percent of the entire human population will be going to vote this year to vote people in or to vote people out is happening this year 2024 49 percent of the entire population of the earth, they are going to the polls to vote. So some people don't know where they stand. A lot of people are confused. There are predictions. There are schemings and mischiefs and calculations. All kinds of behind the scenes activities. Man is doing their best. The arm of flesh, the arm of flesh, is doing their best. Some trust in chariots, and some in horses, and some in the name of the Lord. But at the end of the day, men cast their lot, but the Lord determines the outcome. Let the Lord our God rise up through the prayers of the church and let him determine the outcome of the elections of the nations of our world that his church and his people will not be disadvantaged in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and say yes. In order to face the future, without fear we must have something more than the natural in life we are all born with different temperaments some are born very courageous daring and others are born fearful timid calm bold aggressive non-aggressive. Everybody has his temperament. But irrespective of our temperament, it is the workings of the spirit when we have submitted to his lordship that, determ that determines what God can do with us. Yes. Because the spirit of God has a way of overriding our temperament and using us as he pleases. To do the will of God. And I pray that irrespective of your temperament. That the Holy Spirit will override your temperament. Deploy your services. Use you to fulfill the will of God. At any time as he pleases. If you believe that. Put your hands together and say yes. 
Oh, your clapping is very, very suspicious. Jesus said the other day, because I live, you shall also live. Because I live, you can face tomorrow. When you remember his promises, and when you know that he cannot lie, when you know that God is able and faithful to bring to pass what he has promised, and that he will do what he promised and what he says he will do, when your faith and your confidence and your audacity in life is, is derived from his promises and from his word, you can then have the audacity or the courage to fix the future knowing that your future is in, your, in his hands. That my future is in his hands and I have nothing to worry nor to be afraid of. For I know in whom I have believed. Paul said, for I am persuaded. I am persuaded. Because I know in whom I have believed that he is able to keep that which I have committed into his hands against that glorious day. Jesus said the other day, he said, he said, no one can plug you out of my hands. For he that gave you to me, he's greater than all. Therefore, no one can plug you out of my hands. What a promise. What a word. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you believe that, give him a higher energy praise. In Jeremiah 29 and the 11 verse, the Bible said, For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, or I think towards you, or the plans I have for you, said the Lord, said the Lord of hosts. For I know the thoughts I think toward you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So it's very clear here that God has not planned any evil for us. Are you hearing me, somebody? Tell somebody, for God has not planned any evil for you. Yeah. And God specifically and categorically made it clear that his plan for you and I are plans of peace and good and not of evil. Therefore, any plan, any thought, any imagination that is of evil is not from him. He's it's from the enemy. And we abolish it in the name of Jesus. Say any evil thought, any evil plan, any evil imagination concerning me and my house and this house and my nation in the womb of time, in the womb of 2024, let it be intercepted and aborted in the name of Jesus as I put my hands together. Somebody declare it. Put your hands down. Make that declaration. It's a declaration. It's a counter declaration. We counter every evil thought. It's not from God. Every evil plan and imagination in the womb of time, in the womb of 2024, concerning our house, concerning our family and our dwellings, we intercept, we abort, abort, abort in the name of Jesus. Say yes. And the reason why we can face the future without fear is not because we are strong. For by strength shall no man prevail. And it's not because we are better than others or know anything better. But it's because he has a plan. And he thought and plans for our lives are plans and thoughts of good and not of evil. And on that basis, we can counter any other thought, any other plan, any other imagination, any thought, any plan, any imagination concerning us and our dwellings, our children, our loved ones, our family, that is contrary to God's thought, to God's plan. In the name of Jesus, we have the right to raise a counter attack and a counter declaration to abort and counter it 
put your hands together and say yes hallelujah come with me to 2 Timothy 1 7 2 Timothy 1 7 for God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind so it's clear here again that God has not given us a spirit of fear when you see a spirit of fear it's clear here that fear is a personality fear is not something fear is someone fear is a personality it's a spirit and whenever the enemy wants to torment you and wants to harass want to torture incapacitate and demobilize you one of the weapons he deploys is the person of fear he sends fear your way and when fear comes it opens you up to all kinds of torture torment buffeting afflictions and harassment but in the name of jesus every spirit of fear that have been released to trouble you to torture you to torment and to harass you and your family and this house let it be intercepted let it be brought into captivity as you put your hands together right now we intercept fear torment we bring into captivity any force of fear any force of torment torture harassment in the name of jesus of any kind shape or form we intercept arrest 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 every personality and weapon of fear released against your church and your people in the name of jesus to torment to buffet to harass to afflict let it be a curse bound in the name of jesus in the name of jesus say in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus thank you lord say thank you in the name of jesus the bible said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge when we lack knowledge and understanding of the scriptures then we become victims and casualties say in the name of jesus me and my house and this house will not be victims or casualties of any work of the enemy in the name of jesus say i will not be a victim of the thought of the wicked of the imagination of the enemy of the agenda of the enemy say me and my house are survivors victors and not victims in the name of jesus put your hands together and shout yes somebody asked me the other day papa what are you are you a prophet an apostle evangelist teacher pastor and i said i am a coach i am called to raise up an army for god my job is to train and raise an army of men and women who know how to fight no matter where you put them i was telling some of my spiritual and biological children the other day i said i know and i understand my assignment and I said, and I know and understand why some of you connected to me go through the things you go through only because I am your biological father or spiritual father. I understand that when the enemy can't get at you as a parent, he goes after what you love. But today, I take divine immunity over everyone and over everything you love by the blood of Jesus. Let the ones you love be preserved. Let your loved ones be delivered. Let your loved ones be delivered. Let your loved ones be preserved. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. And I said to them, you know, one of these, there's a movie about a godfather and a very young successful businessman came to marry his daughter. And he said to him, he said, do you understand 
that when your enemies come after you, they will go after what you love. He didn't get the message. He was very successful. And the other side, his enemies came after. They tried everything. They couldn't get him. And they killed the wife. And the old man said to him, I told you that when they can't get you, they'll go after what you love. Today, may our loved ones be preserved. May our loved ones be delivered. I was telling them in the first service that when my mother took seed of me, she bled for many months and the doctor said, Florence, you are anemic, you are lying in cold blood, you are weak, you can't carry this pregnancy. And so they performed a DNC on my mom. Months after the stomach kept growing, they went back to theater and realized that we were twins. And the procedure took my twin and by providence left me there. I survived not because of anything good of my own. I only survived because of his plan, because of his mercy. I only survived by providence that God had a plan and his plan was for good and not of evil. And throughout my life, I've been through a lot. My mom used to say that whenever I was sick, it was always like life and death. The same malaria that everyone goes through, but when it comes to my turn, it's like, it's life and death. What it takes others a year becomes a battle for me. What is easy for others is a fight. And I never understood it until many years after, after I lost three of my fingers and I've been through so much, I understood that there was a reason why I was going through the things I went through. I understood that because of my assignment, because of what I carried, because I was a righteous seed, a promised seed, a royal seed, somebody was interested in me. And the nightmare, the contention, and everything that I dealt with, the uncertainty, the lack of direction, the lack of clearance, the mental bombardment and confusion, and everything I went through, I, I didn't understand who I was and what was going on and what was happening. I was confused about life and the future. It was until the light came on and the darkness was expelled. Then it was clear to me that, oh, I am a royal seed, a promised seed, that God had a plan for my life that I had no idea of. But somebody had a clue. Somebody felt it. Somebody sensed it. Somebody knew that this young man here is a promised seed. He's a royal seed. And therefore, declared war to take me out before even I came to the realization that God had a plan for my life, I pray for you and pray for anyone hearing the sound of my voice, home and abroad, domestic and external, wherever you are, whoever you are, that the veil will be lifted, that the spell will be broken, that the bewitchment will break, that every cloud of darkness and evil over your life and your future in the name of Jesus will be expelled and that the light will come on and that you will have light and illumination in the name of Jesus. Put your hands on Say yes. In every family, God has appointed a royal seed, a promised seed, and they are always a target for the enemy. I have 43 brothers and sisters, 43 brothers and sisters. And sometimes my dad used to say, you, Nicholas, who are you? He said, you don't act and look like me at all. You are very different from all my children. What is your problem? Why are you like that? My mother used to literally curse me. My mother would say, useless boy, useless. You won't go to school. Look at you. Sansing. And my auntie would say to my mother, don't say that to this boy. One day he would take care of him. And my, ma my, aunt, my mother would say, this one, take care of who? Me, Florence, this one, this useless boy. I was disguarded 
Nobody had faith in me. Nobody thought I would ever become anything. I was ostracized. I was a loner. Among my siblings, I was born alone. Some were two, three, four, five. I was born alone. I was a loner. I was among brethren, but I was in part. Something wasn't adding up when it came to me. Very lonely with a sense of rejection. Have no sense of clarity and of what the future held in store. Because somebody was on my case. They tried everything to eliminate me. But God said, not so. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody say, not so, not so, not so, not so. Say yes. There are different kinds of fears. Many kinds of fears in life. We don't have just one fear. There are many fears. And we'll talk about some of the fears. But everybody is dealing with some kind of a fear or the other. Including me. We all deal with fears. And we are, all have fears of different things. But today, whatever kind of type of fear you are dealing with, you can be delivered. And I command your deliverance. I said I command your deliverance. Come on, put your hands together and say yes. Facing the fear without future, 2024 is a very interesting year in the history of man. Because so much is going on. Some trust in horses and in chariots. Some believe by winning through schemings and winning through money and winning through all kinds of strategies. But let those who trust and put their faith in the living God have the upper hand. Say yes. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. I pray that as you hear the sound of my voice, you will obtain power. And he said love, love towards God and love towards man. Love for God, love for humanity. The lack of love is, is because of selfishness, self-centeredness. Everybody is about themselves. There is no reason why anybody should be poor in this world. There is so much that God has put on earth to make every human being on planet Earth a millionaire and even more than that. And there will be still so much left for generations to come. But the reason for the poverty is because just a few percentage of people between three and four, five percent of the human race controls the entire wealth of the earth. Selfishness. It is never enough. The more they have, the more they want. And they want it at the expense of others. They don't care the rules they break. They don't care what they violate and who they destroy and who they kill for, for money and for power. I said in the first service that there are people in this world who are so poor that all they have is money and power. Outside of money and power, they don't have anything. They don't have capacity. They lack skills. They, they are not relational. They have no relationship. They don't have goodwill. They have no strategic friends, no connections. They lack compassion, they are cold, they are mean, they are unforgiving, they are bitter, they are schemers. They are always looking for ways and means to hurt others and to take what others have. They have nothing to offer. All they have is money and power. So they hold on to money and they hold on to power by all means. Because the day they are stripped of money and power, they have nothing to offer. People love them and relate to them because of money and because of power. When they don't have money and they don't have power, even their own siblings and families don't like them. Hey, they are only like because they have money and power. I pray that that will not be the story of your life. Come on, put your hands together and say yes. 
Lift up your hand, pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute. Malanda kasan kiwasi liki tandu kasalan imailu kuwasali hita kufan kifalandu kawasin day to kali kasalamatayas. You know, sometimes I'm there and I just pray in tongues for days, for weeks and months. And all I do is just pray in the spirit because I don't know what to pray for and how to pray as I ought to pray. But I can sense, I can sense there are three Ds, peace, peace, I want you to write and hold on to. The first P is passion. You need to pray for prayer passion. That prayer will become a passion. Hmm. Yeah. That you have the perception for prayer. Perception for prayer. Perception for prayer. And the persistence of prayer. Because sometimes it's like the more you pray about something, it gets worse. But it's a strategy of the enemy to get us to stand down and to stop prayer. To discourage us. But what you must understand is it is said that before it gets better, it gets worse. And uh, when you cut the head of a serpent, you got to be careful of the tail because the head can be cut and the tail can be everywhere trying to hurt you. But that doesn't mean the snake is alive. So sometimes you can pray on things and the more you pray about something, it gets worse and it's like, God, what's going on? What is happening here? God can still be working in the mix of all that is going on and you will know and understand that God is working. He has a way of doing his own thing. He has a way of winning the fight. But hear me. I told somebody, I said, through intercessors, pray without time. They don't pray according to time. They pray till they have the note of victory. They pray till something happens. Are you hearing me, somebody? Put your hands together, say yes. Look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. There is no fear in love. Yes, sir. But perfect love casteth out fear. Mm -hmm. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So fear brings torment. And the whole reason for fear is to torment you, torture you, buffet you, harass you, and cause you to imagine all kinds of things that are not true and real and to cause you to hear whisperings and things that are not true and the enemy will be telling you this is what's going to happen i'm going to do this i'm going to do that when fear comes it opens you up to harassment to torment to torture so it's not just enough to deal with fear but you got to deal with torment we curse every torment in the name of jesus we curse the tormentors we bind the tormentors in the name of Jesus. Put your hands here. Bind the tormentors. Come on, somebody. Bind the tormentors. It's not just about fear, but it's about torturing you, tormenting you. Let the torments be a curse in the name of Jesus. Say yes. Facing the fear, the future without fear. Without the scriptures. And if we fail to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, then the waves of life, the challenges of life, has a way to take us off course and to make us dwell on the waves and on the circumstances of life and will make us act, talk, and think like ordinary men. But we are not ordinary people. We are the redeemer of the Lord. We are heirs of salvation. We are heirs of God. Join heirs with Christ. We are supernatural people. We are not ordinary people. The other day something said, I am a Nazarite. And he said, Reza has never touched my head. And in the day that Reza touches my head, I will become like any other man. Turn to somebody and say, you are not like any other man. You are not like any other man. You say, you're not. You are not like any other. You are unique. 
You are a curse breaker. You are a game changer. Tell somebody you are a curse breaker. Yes, sir. You are a curse breaker. A game changer. You will break the curse that nobody has broken in your family and in your generation before. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say, I am a curse breaker. I am a game changer. Say it. Scream. The enemy is very determined, very determined, relentless, very determined and relentless. And you and I must have the awareness and the understanding of what we are dealing with. John chapter 10 verse 10, he comes to kill, to steal and to destroy. That is his agenda. That is his mandate and assignment. He's never going to relent. He's out to kill, to steal, and destroy. And hear me, he's not after just everybody. He seeks and looks for the royal seed, for the promised seed of every family, to go after them and to take them out. But I pray that you will be exempted, that you will be delivered, that you will escape the snare of the enemy. Give me 2 Kings 11, 1. 2 Kings 11, 1. There, there was this woman in the Bible, the daughter of Jezebel and King Ahab by the name of Atalia. And Atalia is a spirit. Atalia is a spiritual assassin that seeks to eliminate the royal seed. When you see the enemy, going after a particular child, a particular son, a particular daughter in a family. And every time you see things going on with that child, it's a prophetic indication that that child is a royal seed or a promised seed. And Atalia's assignment is to kill the royal seed. It's to go after them before they even get to know who they are. But today in the name of Jesus, let the spirit of Atalia be a curse. Let Atalia be intercepted. Let Atalia be bound in the name of Jesus. Say yes. Let the destroyer be destroyed. Let the waster be wasted. In the name of Jesus, say yes. Atalia, ladies and gentlemen, was the only queen in the state of Israel who was not just a queen but she ruled the nation every other queen was married to a king but this one for her it was not enough to be a queen because she was married to a king she decided to rule the nation and the only way she could rule was to eliminate all the royal seed read look at it and when Athalia the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. Her assignment was to take out all the royal seed, the promised seed. I never understood why I had to go through some things I went through in life. Sometime my father looked at me and seriously, he had issues with me because I was like, you know, the black sheep of the family. I was a shegelele. Are you hearing me? Some of you don't understand that expression. You know, I was some way. And yet, it was years after. I have 43 siblings, 37 by my dad and six by my mother. And I don't know why God chose me but I understand that the reason why the enemy targeted me all those years and will still fight me even now and my children is because he's, he knew something. He saw something I didn't know. I pray that for every royal seed and promise in your life and in your family will be preserved in the name of Jesus. That the enemy will not take you and any royal seed out before your time. 
that the Lord shall preserve you and your family and that Atalia will be intercepted in the name of Jesus. In the day that Atalia will make a move in the name of Jesus, let her be disappointed. You know, David and his mighty men, they slew and they killed five giants. Goliath was born by a giant from Gath. And they were five brothers. They were all giants. And David and his mighty men slew them all. But they slew four. And one of Goliath's brothers laid wait, ambushment, set a trap for David. And at this time, David was old and gray-headed. And the Bible said that this guy came up with a new sword. Somebody say a new sword. Which stands to reason that he came up with a new virus, a new strategy, a new sickness, disease, attack. Something that David had never dealt with and handled before. He came up with a new sword. It was a time-sensitive attack. It was a surprise attack. And at this time, David was old and gray-headed. And you know, David prayed a prayer. Eh? And every one of us must pray that prayer every now and then. He said, oh Lord, when I am old and gray-headed, let me not be disadvantaged. Forsake me not until I have shown your strength to my generation and your power to them that are to come. I now can understand why he prayed that prayer. As I'm growing, I realize that as you grow, the battle plans changes. And that's why when they were in the wilderness, God gave them fresh manna every day. That's why we need renewed mercy every morning. And that's why he said, give us this day our daily bread. Because yesterday's bread cannot sustain you today. Yesterday's mercy cannot sustain you today. Yesterday's manner is not enough for today's manner because today's challenges is different from yesterday's challenges. So every day you need fresh mercy. Every day you need renewed mercy. Every day you need fresh manner. Put your hands together. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say new mercy, new mercies. I see every morning. That's why you need to de develop passion for prayer. That's why you just can't depend on yesterday prayers. That's why the Bible says, men ought to pray always. Pray without ceasing. Men ought to always to pray and not to faint. Colossians 4 to continue in prayer with thanksgiving, watching there unto. You can never get to a point where you think that, oh, I have prayed enough. Jesus has been praying for 2,000 years. Right now, he's praying. He's praying for you and I. 2,000 years. And he hasn't stopped praying. What makes you think that the fasting you did a few weeks ago is enough? So you can eat the rest of the year. It's not enough. Every day comes with a new challenge. And David met Goliath's brother and he encountered David with a new sword. You know, COVID-19 was a new virus. The world was not ready for it. We didn't have a vaccine. We didn't have a solution for COVID-19. It, it took so many lives. But I pray that in your lifetime, you always be ready for any surprise attack. That you have the upper hand over any surprise attack. And, and one of David's mighty men one of David's mighty men came on the scene, intercepted Goliath's brother, stripped him of the new sword, and rescued David from his hand. I pray that in your time of need, God will always send divine helpers to rescue you. That there will be somebody positioned to deliver you. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Put your hands together. Give him praise. And I pray that God will always raise up somebody
to pray for your children and to deliver your children and your grandchildren whenever they are in need or in crisis anywhere that the Lord will raise up helpers for your children and your grandchildren. Put your hands together. Say yes. You know, I was telling them in the first service that we must not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The enemy we are dealing with is, doesn't play fair at all. He does not play fair. So the Bible says we are not ignorant of his devices lest he gains advantage. I was telling them a few months ago, a brother in the choir, his brother was celebrating his birthday. And they planned to go by the beach to celebrate. So he came to church and went after the second service to the beach to meet them. I don't know the details, but... It seems like one of the brothers jumped into the sea to go swim, and then he started drowning. So the second one went to rescue him, and both of them didn't make it. The third one in the choir didn't know how to swim, so he didn't jump in to rescue because he didn't know how to swim. Two brothers taking the same minute. That is not an accident. That is a calculation and a programming that was programmed in the womb of time. It was a calculation, a conspiracy that was devised in the womb of time. It was an evil device. It was a wicked imagination. Some monster and beast in the sea had made a claim and a demand for those boys. And for whatever reason, the lack of spiritual sensitivity the lack of the prophetic instincts and senses gave the enemy an advantage to take them. It was a calculation. I pray that any claim and demand that has been made on anyone hearing me or any one of your sons and your daughters, grandchildren and loved ones, home and abroad, in the name of Jesus, let it be aborted. Let it be aborted. Let it be disappointed. Put your hands and say, I'm disappointed, 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 disappointed. In the name of Jesus, let it be disappointed. Say amen. I was talking to Bishop Oboda and he was telling us about one of the young men. He used to be here and he went to school at Cape Coast. Bishop, tell us what happened with that guy. Yeah, um, he was in school on campus as usual. The rest of the group wanted to go to the beach, but he decided he was not going. But so he stayed in his room. But somewhere along the line, he had a strong urge to go to the beach. So he went to the beach. When he got there, the secretary was drowning, swimming and drowning. And he decided to jump to rescue, and then he died. And the lady rather made it. Hear me. That was an accident. An accident. It was a programming. It was a calculation. Yes. The lady he went to rescue survived. Where were the others? How come he was the only one who jumped in to rescue her? And how come she wasn't drowning before he got there? Somebody say calculation. Somebody say programming. And then he said he had an edge. Tell somebody, be careful of your compassion. Be careful of your compassion. You know, a lot has happened to me over the years. And I've learned a lot. That in this life, eh, emotional decisions are very dangerous. And I've learned by experience over the years that it's not everybody you help in this life. Yes. And it's not everybody you allow to come into your house. So much has happened to me and to my own children over the years because of certain individuals that are allowed to come in that shouldn't have come in. And it was later I realized that they weren't supposed to come into my life or my family because they were sent. They were on assignment to come and destroy. But in the name of Jesus, I pray that anyone known or unknown in your life, within your walls and in your family, that have been sent to carry out Satan's plan 
for your life, for your family, your children, your wife, your husband, your marriage, your children, your grandchildren. Let such a one be uncovered. Let them be uncovered, exposed, uprooted. Put your hands together, uncover, expose, uproot them. Pray that prayer. I can't hear you. You are being too nice. The enemy don't play fair. Open your mouth. Make declarations. Put your hands together. Uncover them. Those undercover agents. There are undercover agents in our lives. In the life of our children and grandchildren and loved ones. There are undercover agents within our walls. In our businesses. In our businesses. In our churches. Every undercover agent. We blow their cover. We uncover them. We expose them. In the name of Jesus, we uproot them. We expel them. Expel, 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 expel. In the name of Jesus, we expel them. Say yes. You know, it's not everybody you help. Oh. Yeah. There are some people, you help them and it, it, it's a trouble. You help them and it's a setup. So somebody said, what do I do? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the mature sons of God. And that's why we must cultivate the attitude of being driven, being led, and being directed by the Spirit of God. I'm telling you. Sometimes I realize that one of my greatest failure in life is my compassion and my sympathy. Yeah. That when that compassion and sympathy kicks in, it's like, I won't listen to anything. And there are people I have helped that I should have never helped. Hey! Hey! May the blood of Jesus intervene for me. Ah, let the blood intervene for me in my house. Hey, Kalubasa, let the damage done be repaired and be reversed. In the name of Jesus, I decree a recovery of lost grounds and wasted years and a return of my stolen goods. I'm not telling you to be mean and to be wicked, but I'm telling you be sensitive. I'm telling you, be led by the Spirit. And it's hard work. It's hard work to allow the Spirit to override your own temperament and the way you are wired. You have to allow the Spirit to override the way you are wired. You see, if that brother was led by the Spirit, at that moment, when he saw the lady drowning, if he was driven by the Spirit, the Spirit would have restored train him to say don't do it and you see how tough it is you see how difficult it is to see somebody drowning and you can do something and yet you don't act it makes you wicked you just can't stand it your compassion kicks in and that is what has fought me in many ways over the years in ministry in life I allow my compassion and my sympathy to kick in and, and ignore the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And I won't follow the Spirit of God only to find out later that my compassion was used to ensnare me. May the Holy Spirit overrule your nature. May the Holy Spirit overrule your compassion and, and, and cause you to be led by the Spirit. I'm not saying go around and be mean. Oh, that's not what I'm saying. But you have to let the Spirit of God eh, control and direct and determine the decisions you make in life. Because emotional decisions are dangerous. And the enemy knows. And some of you too, you are so mean that even if the Spirit of God activates your compassion, you will still be mean. Because you are just mean. That also you have to watch. The bottom line here is to be led by the Spirit. You never go wrong when you are Spirit-led and Spirit-driven. Put your hands together and give Him praise.
Give me Psalm 41, verse 5. Psalm 41, verse 5. Mine enemies speak evil of me. Mm -hmm. When shall he die and his name perish? You see, this thing, eh? I'm still dealing with the two brothers and the young man that drowned. He was beckoned. He had an edge. That edge to go to the sea was not just ordinary. It was calculated. Sometimes we have an edge to go do things. Smoke, drink, chase men, chase women. Do all kinds of things. And you have no idea that it was, it's not just an edge. You are being wet. Tell somebody you, you are being wet. Yeah. They are, they are drawing you. There, there, is, there is what I call, you are being beckoned. There was some monster in the sea that beckoned the brother, the young man, to come and die. And there was a perfect setup. Perfect setup. Standing there, you can swim. And you see a lady drowning. It, it takes the supernatural to know what to do. Because left to a natural man, you go in there. It takes developing spirituality. That's why we have command your week. That's why every Wednesday we fast and pray. That's why we are doing everything to help you. But for some of you, it doesn't matter how much spiritual help we give you, you don't respond. You are just set in your ways. And even when the spirit overrides your nature, you will still not respond. And it's very dangerous to be disobedient and to be stubborn and to rebel and to be defiant against everything. He shouldn't have gone to the beach. Oh, Kasala to son. He shouldn't have been there. I pray for you, eh? That you and your family and your loved ones will never be at the wrong place in 2024 and beyond that anywhere you are not supposed to be that you have been programmed by the enemy to be there i pray for divine escape i pray for divine escape put your hands together and say divine escape 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 in the name of jesus open your mouth and say divine escape look at me the bible said a man a man left Jerusalem and went outside the walls and the gate of Jerusalem and he was ambushed by thieves and they stripped him and beat him and left him to die. They did not attack him in Jerusalem. It was outside of the walls and the gates of Jerusalem. I pray this here. That you will never leave the boundaries of God's protection. That you will not go outside God's protection for your life. And I don't care what they use to ensnare you. That you will escape in the name of Jesus. I don't care what they use to, to, to trap you. To ensnare you in the name of Jesus. That you will escape it. Put your hands together and say, I will escape. I will escape. Say it. Say it with your mouth. I will escape. I will escape. Say, I escape. My family will escape. My house will escape. My nation will escape. This house will escape. Command divine, escape, 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 escape in the name of Jesus. Escape. Somebody say, Papa, what are you doing? I'm teaching you how to fight. I'm teaching you how to survive. You know, what I'm doing, you can't always go online to join prayer meetings to survive. You got to know how to fight on your own. You have to learn how to fight on your own. Because there come a time when nothing works and you can't even get online. What do you do? But if you have learned the passion of prayer, and you have learned how to pray the scriptures on your own, you can survive anywhere they put you. It doesn't matter where you are. Jonah was in the belly of the wheel. He was in the belly of the fish, down below, down below, in the sea. And 
he had learned how to pray. He had learned how to cry out. And out of the belly of the wheel, he cried out. And the Bible said, and God heard him and commanded the fish to vomit him out. I pray that wherever you are, whatever situation you find yourself in, that you will learn how to cry out. Somebody say, cry out. Mosila, itula kisi falas, leki tu kalakasand, lewa laha kun simalin, biva lu kawahan, diye tu kualasan, divide their tongues, break their ranks, let confusion come upon them. Suddenly, wherever they are, let the destruction they have devised for us turn on them in the name of Jesus. Let their diviners and their divination. Yea, and the sorceress be made mad, make diviners mad, frustrate the tokens of liars. Yea, turn their knowledge into foolishness, make diviners mad, turn their tokens, O oh God, frustrate their tokens, frustrate their tokens, make diviners mad, turn the wise backwards, turn the wise man backwards, make their knowledge foolish. Put your hands up, pray that scripture, pray that scripture on the screen. Frustrate the tokens of liars. There are tokens. There are liars in this world. Make diviners mad. Turn the wise man backwards. Make their knowledge foolish. Put your hands up. Pray that prayer. Pray the scriptures. And fast the word. Pray the word. You can never go wrong when you pray the word. There are people who think they are so smart. They are so wise. But oh Lord, whoever they are, wherever they are, no, 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 no. Domestic and external make their knowledge foolish turn the wise man and the sorceress backwards let them be disadvantaged and disappointed that divides the head of your people in the name of Jesus thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Nya Yehovah Shirano Shirano Nya Shirano, Shirano, ah, when we pan to his head, yeah, oh, Shirano, you know, ah, when he died,
Lift it up, lift it up. 